All right, good morning everyone. We come to our session where we'll be doing our revision for the assignment that we had yesterday. I was impressed with the responses that we got from the students. We at least they managed to attempt and answer some of the questions. And so let's begin with uh, question one. Uh, these uh, questions came from mathematics paper two, and to be specific, they're coming from uh, section A segment of uh, the examination that were written. So let's come to question one. Question one was uh, based on the topic called inequalities, and it features most of the time in the examinations. So the question was uh, 4b minus 3 is greater than 6b plus 4b. So here the technique is the like terms together. So there is the 4b, 3, 6b, and uh, 4 there. So we're going to do our collection of our like terms. And so this 6b will come this side, this negative 3 will go the other side. And so we'll end up with 4b minus 6b is greater than 4 plus 3. At this stage, we do our computation. So we we'll say 4b minus 6b to give us negative 6b. And the other side, we we'll say uh, 4 plus 3 to give us 7. Then we, our intention is to remain with the b alone here. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 2 so that the b is able to remain alone. And so the rule of inequality is that when we divide by a negative, the implication is that the sign has to change as well. And so negative 2 divided by negative 2 will give us positive 1, and so the b will remain alone there. The other side, positive 7, will divide by negative 2 to give us negative 3, 1 over 2. And so we're able to see that uh, when we divided the positive 7 by the negative 2, the greater sign changed to the lesser sign, implying to say b is less than negative 3 and half there. And so that was the solution for the first part of the assignment. Let's go to question 2. Question 2 was based on uh, matrices, a topic which features almost every year in the examination. And so we are given this matrix, uh, which was saying 2, 3, negative 1, and 5. And so the determinant formula is given by AD minus BC. So we replaced uh, the letters by the, um, the values that were given, and we were able to see to say the 5, that is the D, the A, that is the 2, the negative 1, which is the C, and the 3 there, that will give us the B. And so when we do our computation there, we end up with the positive 3. So positive 3 was the value for the determinant that was given in the question. Let's proceed to the requirement 2. So requirement 2 needed us to find the inverse of the matrix itself. And so the matrix is given by 1 over 13. We put the, the matrix there. And so we are going to observe to say 5 and 2 have swapped, which is basically the rule that we are given when we are dealing with indices. Then these that are of B and C are going to have negatives. They're going to attract negatives of themselves. And so positive 3 is positive there. When it comes in the inverse uh, computation, it becomes negative. This negative 1 is already negative. And so when we give it another negative, it will give us a positive. And so that's why you are seeing the positive 1 there. At this stage, you just do the final part of the computation, which is basically the, the expansion. Okay, so 1 over 13, okay, we proceed. And so we are dealing with the part where we are saying that uh, this uh, 1 over 13 has to expand now. And so 1 over 13, when we multiply by 5, it will give us uh, 5 over 13. 1 over 13 when we multiply by 1 will give us 1 over 13. 1 over 13 we multiply by, uh, by that negative 3 will give us negative 3 over 13. And finally, 1 over 13 multiplied by 2 will give us 2 over 13. And so this expression is the inverse function of the inverse expression for the matrix. Let's do the last part of uh, the question for the matrix on this one, which was saying we multiply A, find the value of AB, which is basically multiplying the matrices. And so the rule of matrices is that uh, the rows must be multiplied by the columns. That row multiplied by that column that is there. And so this row by that column is simply 2 by 2, which is 2 by 2, when we do add there, 3 multiplied by 3, which is 3 by 3. Negative 1 by 2 will give us negative 1 by 2. This 5 multiplied by 3, which is 5 by 3. So we do our computation there. 
which will end up giving us 4 plus 9. This part will end up, end up giving us negative 2 plus 15. When we do our final computation there, it will give us 13 and 13. That was the, the expression for the multiplication sign. Let's go to question 3, which I've put in the right corner of the board here, which is saying uh, we need to factorize here. So x plus 2 over x squared minus uh, 4. So down here, what we are seeing is the difference of 2 squared. And so when we do our factorization uh, bot down here on the bottom, we end up with the x plus 2 and x minus 2. So at this stage, we just, just cancel out what is common between the expressions. So we've got x plus 2 and the x plus 2 cancelling out each other. And we remain with the 1 over x minus 2. So th this was the, the solution for question 3. Let's go to question 4, which was basically an equation, expression of an equation with, with fractions. So we have the 6 over x plus 2 is equal to 2 minus 3. So the first step there is to cross multiply, which is basically the 6 will multiply by the 3. So 6 multiply by 3, 2 multiply by x plus 2, which is 2 will multiply by x plus 2. At this stage, we remove the brackets by expanding. So 6 by 3 will give us 18 is equal to 2x, which is 2 times x, plus 2 times 2 to give us 4. At this stage, we do our collecting of like terms together. So this 4 is going to go the other side. Okay, let me just show you the 4 has gone that side. So it will be 18 minus 4 is equal to 2x. At this stage, our interest is the x to remain alone. So I'll divide by 2, both sides. So 2 into 2 to give us 1, 2 into 14 to give us 7. So that was the, the answer for question number 4. Question 5 was the, a quadratic expression, which features almost all the time with 5 marks. And so we have this expression, 2x plus 5x minus 8 is equal to 0. Then I just introduced the standard uh, quadratic expression, which is ax squared bx plus c is equal to 0. Okay, so we now collect what we need. So we've got the a there, we've got the b there, and we've got the c. We harmonize it to the equation given uh, by the examiners there. So we're able to see that the a is equal to 2, which is this one, b is equal to 5, and c is equal to negative 8 which is basically this information you are seeing. Then we just substitute uh, the numbers into the letters in the formula itself. Okay, so we have got the 5, which is representing the B, then we've got the 5 squared, which is B squared, we've got the 4 there, then we've got the A, which is basically the 2, and the C, which is negative 8. Down there we've got 2 and the uh, open bracket, the 2 also. So during our final computations, we're able to see to say 5 plus or negative the square root of 90, over 4, which ends up giving, which gives us this part, which is saying 5 plus or negative 9.49 over 4. So when we do our final computation for this part, it's supposed to give us two expressions or two solutions. So my first solution is 3.62 or negative 1.12. So these expressions will always give us two answers, one with a positive sign and one with a negative sign. Let's proceed to question 6. Okay, so we proceed to question 6, which was a, a bit interesting. For many, much of the students, they had a challenge in computing this one. So this one is a quadratic expression and the factorization a difference of two squares. So we need to factorize this part first. That's when we can deal with this one. So how do we factorize the, the top part? So the first uh, thing that we do, we always multiply these two. We find the product of those two. So 2 by negative 5 will give us negative 10. Okay? From this stage, we proceed to say which factors of negative 10, which when we add, it must give us the middle number here, negative 3. Which factors of this negative 10, which when we add together, must give us negative 3. So we have negative 5 and positive 2. Those are the factors which when we add to give us negative 3. So where there's negative 3, we need to put negative 5 plus 2. Okay, so let's work it out. So 2y squared, which is basically this one. So I was saying where there's negative 3, we need to replace with those two um, factors. So this is my negative 5 plus 2y minus 5. Okay, so at this stage, we need to factorize on top. 
Okay, so we divide the equation in two parts. What is common this side? We discover to say the, the y is common. So I'll remove it out, which is this, this y that you are seeing there. So when I remove the y from this expression, I remain with it, 2y minus 5 plus also this side, what is common between it is basically positive 1. So this one, I'll remove it. What remains is 2y minus 5. So if these two are the same, it means that we are moving on the correct part and on the correct phase. When we finish that, we proceed to the down part. We factorize the difference of two squares. So y squared minus 1 will basically become y plus 2 and y minus 1. So at this stage, we now get this y plus 1, which is basically this one, y plus 1. And we pick one of the common expressions. So 2y minus 5, 2y minus 5, we just pick one of them. So 2y minus 5. Let me just repeat, trying to emphasize the point here. So at this stage, we say, one, this y that is outside, and this positive y that is outside, you get them. So y plus 1. And you move, get in the common factors. Just pick one of them. So this is 2y minus 5. Then over the difference of two squares. At this stage, you now cancel out what is common between them. So y plus 1 and the y plus 1 will be common. So we cancel it out. We remain with 2y minus 5 and the y minus 1, which is basically this expression that is here. That is the, the correct answer for this part. So we need to practice these kind of questions a lot because they are coming more frequent in the examinations now. Question 7 was basically simple. It was based on board math. And interesting that we had a bit of challenges there, but it's just uh, based on board, board math. Bracket of division, multiplication, addition, and the subtraction. So we need to begin with what is in the brackets, which is 1.3 squared. So we multiply this twice. It will give us that 1.69 plus that's the positive sign you're seeing there. Okay, then I've got, I'm supposed to put 1.3 .3 there, which is the 1.3 there, and the 0 0.3. At this stage, we now go to multiplication instead of addition. So multiplication comes earlier. So 1.69 plus plus 1.3 times 0 0.3. So I'm going to compute this part, which will give us 0 0.39. Then I add the 1.69, which will give us now the 2.08. So this one is fairly simple, so just based on board mass. Let's be careful, board, board mass assessments will always appear in the examination. Question 8 was uh, another simple question. It was based on a single fraction. Okay, so let's, let's work it out. Here we just need to find the common denominator. So it is x minus 2, x plus 3. We put them in brackets. Then we begin to cancel. So this into that will give us 1. What has remained is uh, this one. So that will multiply with the, the 4 multiplied by the x plus 3. This into that will give us 1. What has remained it is uh, basically that multiplication. So those multiplications end up with uh, these expressions. So 4 times x gives us 4x plus 4 times 3 gives us 12, minus 2 by x, minus 2x, then minus 2 and minus 2 give us 24. Then at this stage, we need to collect the like terms together, which is basically this part, 4x minus 2x plus 4 plus 4. So then down we've got the, the, our common denominators. So 4x minus 2x gives me 2x plus 4 plus 4 gives me 16, and that is the, the final answer for these ones. These ones are always feature, so let's be careful also with them. Let's look at question 9. Question 9, I, I, to just for your purpose, I intended to bring back the matrix here so that we practice a lot on the determinant inverse and also on some part of matrices. Let's work, let's work it out. They wanted us to, uh, to do an expression in terms of A. Okay, so it was fairly simple. Meanwhile, we know to say, uh, we're given that, that, that standard expression. Let me just put it for the sake of uh, reminding each other. So we've got AD minus BC. So we are given the, the we are given the a which was the, the that part. We are also given the the d which is the a that was, that, that, that they required in the question. We are given the, the b. We are given the c which is the three and the two. So you just uh, insert it and complete the multiplication. So uh, that a will multiply by the two to maintain like that negative three and two to give us six. So this was the expression in terms of a. Requirement B was talking about a determinant which was already given, and we needed, we, we needed to find out the value of A that was given in the requirement A. Okay, so we just equate the equation to 2. 2 which is the determinant, and we equate it to basically this answer. We equate it there. And we begin to work it down, downwards to find the value of A. So I've got my 2 there, 
I've got my two, negative two and I've got my negative six. So I'll do the like terms together. So this six come that side. So two plus six is equal to negative two n. Okay, so two plus six will give us the eight. We work out for the value of n, which will give us the negative four. So this one was fairly a straightforward question and point. Requirement three required us to do the inverse, which is very common in the questions. Let's work it out. Also, we are given, like I said, so this is, a, this is basically the determinant that is given, which is the two, and we do our, we apply our rules there. So applying our rules there, we discover to say uh, these two had to swap, and the, the negative three and the two had to get some negat negatives of themselves. From there, we do our expansion. So this half has to multiply everything inside, which will give us uh, the negative two over two, and uh, ne negative two over two again there, then we have the negative three over two, and negative four over two. So this was the final expression or the final part of the inverse. Let's move to question 10, which was an equation. This also feature and common in our examination sessions. Uh, in this case, it was fairly simple. So we're given that inequality. They're asking us to determine uh, the expression for x in this inequality. Okay, so we're going to do expansion. So we'll say negative 2, we multiply it by uh, the x to give us that, that expression. Negative 2 times negative 4 give us positive 8. This will just drop there. 2 minus 4x. At this stage, we collect the like terms together. So negative, this 4 has to come that side. The 8 is going to go the other side. So negative 2x plus 4x minus or greater than or and this is uh, less than or equal to 2 minus 8. So this, this one will give us uh, positive 2x uh, less than or equal to negative 6. We we'll divide by the 2 so that the x can remain alone. So we can end up with our negative 3 in the, as the answer for the inequality. Let's look at question 11, which was the factorization. This one was fairly simple as well. So we've got uh, this 2x squared minus 50. We need to, we need to factorize. So let's begin the factorization process. So I want to say what is common, both sides. Produce them. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try out, work it out with the 2. So 2 into 32. So I'll just put my 2 there and I'll insert some brackets there. So 2 into 32 will give us 16. The x squared drops also. 2 into 50 gives us 25. So I want to notice to say in the brackets we would what we call perfect squares, which we're able to factorize. 16 is a perfect square. Why? Because 4 times 4 gives us 16. 25 is a perfect square. Why? Because 5 by 5 will give us 25. So we are able to do the factorization. So when we do the factorizations, what we are saying is that this 16 I've expressed it in terms of 4, that 25 I've expressed it in terms of 5, and it is twice. So to find the final solution, I'll just say 2, open bracket, I'll pick this 4, which is basically that one, x, the x and I'll say minus 5, I close the brackets. Then I rewrite the expression using the positive sign of the positive figure, which is in that part. So this was, uh, at the end, it was a difference of 2 squares. That was question 11. Let's work out uh, the final four questions so that we're able to smile at the end.